For decades, Sweden was known for having one of the most open and welcoming immigration policies in the world, with a reputation as a humanitarian superpower, where being open to immigrants was an integral part of the Swedish identity. But at some point in recent years, this has changed. Today, the public opinion has turned against further immigration. The Swedish government is claiming that management of this issue has failed, and the country is now radically changing its immigration policies. But what happened? Why is Sweden now changing course after decades of being friendly and open? And why did Sweden fail at managing this issue? This is why Sweden doesn't want immigrants anymore. But first, let me tell you about a company that gives you access to the one asset class declared by the UBS to be extremely resilient to high interest rates and inflation, and the sponsor of this video, Masterworks. This asset class is blue chip contemporary art, an investment that has been actually outperforming the S&P 500, and Masterworks allows you to invest in it while avoiding the costs, risks, and hassles of buying entire works of art yourself. So far, they have distributed over $45 million from 16 successful exits to their investors, with each exit delivering a profit. And while I'm not yet an investor myself, over 860,000 people have signed up, and Masterworks has received positive reviews from Forbes, Business Insider, or The Financial Times. Shares are limited, and new releases can sell out in minutes, but you can skip the waitlist to get access using the link masterworks.art slash explained with Dom. And now, back to the video. But to understand what's going on, we need to explain how we got here. Because immigration is a surprisingly recent chapter of the Swedish history. Until the 1940s, Sweden was an overwhelmingly homogenous country, with only a negligible amount of people coming in. And although it became a haven for refugees from the Nazi-occupied Europe during the Second World War, by 1945, only 2% of its population were foreign-born. And immigration remained very tightly regulated. But since the late 1970s, that has changed, and Sweden radically opened up and started accepting people escaping wars and totalitarian regimes coming in from literally all over the world, from the Eastern Bloc to dictatorships in South America and the Middle East. Throughout the years, those policies were restricted now and then when the numbers got too high, but the overall trend was clear. And then came the European migration crisis. As the Middle East was getting increasingly more unstable, more and more people from Syria and Iraq started heading towards Europe, joined by hundreds of thousands of people from Afghanistan and Africa, running from danger or simply looking for a better life. And Sweden started accepting more refugees per capita than any other nation in Europe, taking in 160,000 people, the equivalent of 2% of its population, at the peak in 2015. Today, over 2 million people, or 20% of Sweden's population, have been born outside of Sweden, making Sweden one of the most diverse countries in the world, and one which in the words of its former prime minister, accepts immigrants and doesn't build walls. Except that's no longer true, and Swedish leaders now sound very different. In 2022, the Swedish Prime Minister from a traditionally pro-immigration Socialist Democratic Party declared that integration of immigrants in Sweden has failed, which led to parallel societies and gang violence, and that the country needs to re-evaluate its beliefs and make some tough decisions. And this major shift is a reflection of how Swedes feel about immigration, and how their views have changed in the past few years. According to an annual opinion poll carried out by Gothenburg University, City, majority of Swedes now want their country to accept fewer refugees. Number of people who feel positive about immigration has dropped by 20% to less than half. And 73% of Swedes think that integration of immigrants in their country has been unsuccessful, a higher number than in any other European country. In other words, the statement of the Swedish Prime Minister that the integration has failed was a public acknowledgement of how most of the country actually feels. But why does an overwhelming majority of people think that their country has failed at integrating immigrants? Well, the most frequently mentioned concern regarding immigration is criminality or specifically, a surge in violent criminality that Sweden seems to be experiencing. Sverige, 
har aldrig för sett något liknande. In recent years, Sweden has seen the kind of violence that the country has rarely experienced before. Wars and violent clashes between rival gangs that take place in the streets in the form of shootings and bomb attacks. According to the Swedish National Police Chief, in 2023, Sweden has experienced the most violence the country has ever had. And while this is a very sensitive issue in Sweden, it is hard to overlook that immigration does play a role in that. The gangs involved in drug trade and arms trafficking are mostly made up by people from immigrant backgrounds. And immigrants are roughly three times more likely to be involved in criminal activity than people with Swedish origin. But the issue is more complex than that, and it goes beyond the increase in crime rates. The thing is that although Sweden is sometimes depicted as a crime-infested country, you look at what's happening last night in Sweden. The fact is that it is in general still pretty safe, with crime rates comparable to the European average and much lower than in most of the United States. And while crime dominates the headlines, it doesn't actually directly affect most of the Swedish population. And that's because, as the Prime Minister pointed out, the story of Sweden is now a tale of two countries that exist next to each other but that are very different. The first Sweden is the safe, peaceful and progressive country that you probably imagine, where most of the native Swedes live and where crime, unemployment and poverty is zero to none. And while people read about the problems, they are rarely personally affected by them. But then there's the second Sweden, one that consists mostly of immigrants, where unemployment and crime rates are much higher, where many people can't speak Swedish, and where teenagers join gangs for lack of better choices. And that's where the integration really failed. It allowed the existence of two completely different worlds within one country that are separated by where you're from, but also by class, education, language, or how safe people can feel. And it doesn't work for anyone. Not for people who are now waking up to seeing gang violence that would be previously unheard of. And not for the immigrants who are affected by it the most, and who find it extremely difficult to move on from one Sweden to the other one. But why did Sweden fail so badly at properly integrating immigrants after deciding to accept so many of them? Well, there are a few different reasons. First, the sheer numbers mean that integration was always going to be difficult. In two decades, the immigrant population has basically doubled, as Sweden accepted more immigrants per capita than any other European country. But this was made more complicated by the fact that Sweden did not have a selective approach to immigration, but rather a humanitarian one, meaning that while some countries prefer to take in mostly the highly skilled, highly educated people that will represent a net economic benefit, Sweden has been mostly accepting low-skilled immigrants from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, who often need asylum the most, but who have the most difficult time to integrate. In a highly developed economy like Sweden, where less than 5% of jobs are suitable for people without any qualification, low-skilled immigrants naturally struggle to succeed on the job market, and as a consequence, to integrate into the society. And while this would be a challenge to any country, Sweden made this even more difficult by focusing on a particularly soft approach to how you work with the immigrants. Rather than making integration into Swedish society a requirement, it emphasized people's rights to preserve their own cultures and languages in schools and public institutions. But while this approach was seen as superior, in hindsight it probably helped to further isolate the immigrant population from the majority of the Swedish society. Since last year, Sweden has been led by a government that has an immigration reform as one of its main priorities, and it's making some major changes. Sweden is now making it much more difficult to obtain an asylum as a refugee. It's cracking down on people living in the country illegally, it's restricting low-skilled labor immigration, and it now requires integration, for example learning the language, as a condition for long-term stay and obtaining welfare benefits. And so, looking at its immigration policies, Sweden is now a radically different country than just a few years ago. The country, famous as a humanitarian superpower, seems to be gone. And at least for now, it looks like it's not coming back.